this is a great uh, day for me to get to chat with my old friend, Lauren Schubert Espy. Uh, Lauren, if those of you um, that have been around Buckhead for a while, you probably know of Lauren because Lauren, you worked at Buckhead for six, seven years. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Lauren was the inside out director at Buckhead, ran the high school mm-hmm. thing, and then also uh, worked with Jeff putting on the adult services with what we call a service program. And now you are, uh, you left Buckhead to go out to, to Gwinnett, a Gwinnettian. Go out is the right word. It is <laughs> far away. Listen, that is so bizarre how for so long I worked with people from Buckhead Church you know, in the whole like, oh my gosh, we don't want to drive all the way out there, you know, and everybody outside is like rolling their eyes being like, what are you talking about? Like we drive inside, but it's a real thing. It's it a real is thing. Real. My, sister, my sister has an ITP sticker, you know, and I'm like, Hey, do oh, you want wow. to come see me? And she's like, no, it's too much. It's She's too like, far. let's just FaceTime. <laughs> this is like pre-quarantine. Or Skype, like you and I are doing. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're using Skype today. People are using Skype for all of these interviews. And so many people are like, Oh my goodness, I haven't used Skype since 2000, but it works with our recorder, and so we're using it. Um, Lauren, let's jump in. Here's the way this happened. Um, You, uh, well, our team heard about this talk that you did for the Gwinnett staff on um, what we need to be thinking about, what we need to be doing during the season to care for ourselves well, uh, which felt just really important for all of us. And so I'm just really excited about this deposit into Buckhead Church people. Um, But tell us about how did it, how did it start for you? Yeah, that's great. Well, I mean, I think this whole idea of self-care or showing ourselves compassion is not something that's intuitive for me. Honestly, I'm an Enneagram three, an achiever. If you're taking the color test, I'm a red. So I'm just like, I can survive anything, um, Mm. probably war itself, you know, I hope I don't have to go, but anyways, you know, I just, (laughs) if you did, you would do great. If I did, I would be awesome at it. Um, so it's just, I mean, showing myself compassion or self-care has never been easy. Um, but this past summer and going honestly into fall and winter was just a really hard season for me. I I would liken it to, you know, when you stub your toe and then you hit it again and you hit it again. I mean, that's Mm. how I felt emotionally. Just like, Mm. I'm just not okay. And um, I felt stuck. And for my personality to feel stuck and not have something or a book or an inspirational talk that can't get me out of it is a really debilitating feeling. Mm. And um, so I told my husband and um, I said, hey, I just don't feel it right. Like something's going on and I got to process it with someone and I need more than like a one hour counseling session. Mm-hmm. So I'd heard from a friend about this thing called Onsite. It's a place outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And I signed up for it and I was like, I don't know what this is going to be like. They take your phone. So that was kind of oh, a well. blessing and a curse at the same yeah, exactly. time. Uh, but, um, and it, I signed up for a, four or five day intensive. And so wow. it was, I can't even put into words what it is. And I mean, I think if anyone's listening and they're in the same similar spot of just feeling stuck, I, mm. I would go there. Um, I met this gal there who I don't think we could have been more different. She was amazing and just the best gift. And her name was Dawn and Dawn and I got, she just sat there the first day and said, Hey, why are you here? And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I was like, I can't pinpoint one specific thing. I just Mm. can't get over something. And I just feel stuck emotionally stunted and whatever. And so she, I had to fill out this like 20 billion page intensive. And she said, well, based off what I read, she goes, I'm, I I feel like I can help you. And she goes, I want to help finish your feelings through trauma that you've been through. And when she said that, to be honest with you, Clay, I'm like, whoa, 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 You're like, is like, that a Coldplay song? <laughs> I was like, what? I haven't been, I was like, I have not been through trauma. You know, mm. I mean, there's people in this world. Trauma is these other things. I haven't mm. been mm. through that. But then she defined for me, you know, what trauma was, you know, and in essence, it's a deeply distressing or disturbing experience, you know? Like and quarantine? Like, like quarantine, <laughs> like, like self isolation, <laughs> like being with my three children under five, you know, right now. So um, without being able to leave the home. Yeah. Right, I mean, exactly. I thought that was what was so brilliant about, about how God used this, that he took some things that you learned months ago in your own life because of your own thing. And now he's using those in this season to be able to 
um, give you a platform to be able to help all of us, which I think is really great because we are, I mean, this is a traumatic experience, what we're going through, especially people that are dealing with uh, job loss or being furloughed or some family member who's sick or somebody who's uh, just uh, on the brink with their mental health. Um, I think this is really applicable to all of us. It is. And I think it's hard. I mean, for me, again, I really struggle with even self-care. So the idea of accepting that I've had trauma in my life was very hard for me. Mm. Um, I felt like it sounded fatalistic. It felt Mm. dramatic, you know? Um, And I I think even now it's hard to accept this as trauma because you look at what other people are experiencing and you're like, well, mine isn't as bad as Mm -hmm. that person. Um, So I would say that was really hard for me to accept, but I think finally getting through the process through onsite of accepting trauma coming through this season, I've been able to say this is traumatic and it's given me the opportunity to step back and take some steps that are self-care, you know, Mm -hmm. um, in that, um, the second thing she talked to me about was I want to help you finish your feelings, which was really a novel concept to me because, um, again, the ENTJ of me and eat Myers breaks out. There's like, I don't have feelings. I have thoughts, you know, and I live in them, you know, (laughs) but she was like, no, you, you have a lot of feelings. One Mm -hmm. of the things they say at onsite is you repeat what you don't repair. Um, which I think is a really huge idea. And there were a lot of feelings in me that needed repair. And I didn't realize that they were because I wasn't repairing them, repeating themselves in Mm. my life. Um, So she took me through a process um, and not all of it, obviously I can go through now, but there were five steps that she took me through of of experiencing of how to finish feelings. Well, instead of just let them live out there, you know, feelings are a lot like a live wire. Um, You know, a lot of us have seen the movie inside out Pixar's movie inside out those five emotions, anger, sadness, joy, um, disgust, fear. All of those are really our core feelings. You know, there's Mm -hmm. a lot of other feelings, but those are our core feelings. And when you and I don't deal with our emotions that are from our past or even Mm -hmm. a more recent experience, our emotions don't live in time and space, right? So what hurt my feelings when I was five years old, if I don't finish those feelings can, can exist with me now into my late thirties, early forties. Right. And so the idea behind what, what I walk through with onsite is I got to finish some things that hurt me in the past, because if I bury them alive, again, we all know this, they're going to show up in surprising places. Wow. And obviously in a season like this with a quarantine and having to be stuck at home with people that you love, but can also obviously get on all of our nerves. Um, there's a real need for me to keep finishing my feelings and follow the process that mm. I learned at onsite. Well, and um, this, this is, is hard. Sorry, this is huge for, it's huge for us with the stuff that has happened in our past, which the hard thing about now is that this, um, this, this situation that we're in now might even be exposing some of those feelings that were never repaired, but then also we're experiencing emotions now that we better deal with or else they will wreak havoc when we get out of this, uh, crisis. Could not agree with you more, Clay. And that's, I think that that's why this process has been so helpful for me. Like one of the key emotions, if you don't mind me sharing about this, you know, one of the key emotions I felt when this whole thing first started is, um, I I don't know if I'm going to be significant in this season. I don't know Mm -hmm. if I'm going to have value, right? Like I I love my role in the church, but I mean, you know, this were a multi-campus entity and there were just a core group of people that needed to kind of figure out where we go next. Right. So I found in the early stages of this, my phone wasn't ringing. People didn't need me. And I kind of felt this emotion within me of fear. Like maybe I won't be significant after this. Maybe I won't have influence. And I know that's a lot to say, but I think a lot of people are kind of feeling like, okay, I I don't have an eight hour work day. How do I prove my value and worth, you know? And I found myself looking at my phone or trying to almost create work for myself to show that I'm needed and valuable. And I Mm. realized in that moment, whoa, 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 you're actually having a feeling right now and you need to deal with this. Otherwise, this is going to wreak havoc on your whole, you're going to spend this entire season trying to show you're valuable and worthwhile and having your family approve that of you, if that makes sense. So anyways. Which everyone around you is going to feel the consequences of that. They're going to experience the implications of the striving or the uh, Mm -hmm. putting pressure on yourself or putting pressure. uh, It'll eventually 
leak out onto other people for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yep. Can you take us through, you started to dabble in a little bit, but just yep. take us the thing I loved about um, the talk that you did is that it was, you had such a clear framework. You've got these yep. five simple steps. Can you use that um, yep. and just take us through what should we do? Yeah. The, the first step for many of us, if you're, if you pride yourself on being a thinker, not a feeler all the time is that light bulb moment of, wait, I have a feeling, you know, and you, you got that, that's a hard thing to admit, I guess, mm -hmm. for me, of just like, no, I, I'm not thinking about this. I actually have a feeling mm -hmm. about this. Um, uh, that, that takes us looking at some physical triggers that might be you being stressed or elevated blood pressure or whatever that is. But it took me saying, wait, hold on one second. I have a feeling. And that feeling is telling me something emotional is going on in me. So the first step is just identifying. I have a feeling, um, which is second, not easy, which is not easy. No. So and how do I, we do that? Yeah. And I think that that's where if I'm screaming at my kids right now, I'm not angry. I have a feeling. That feeling mm. might be I'm inadequate with kindergarten math, which, by the way, I am. Uh, but you know, <laughs> turns I mean, out it's true. <laughs> true. Um, but I, I think us identifying that anger, that frustration in me, or that tendency to go to the cabinet and overeat, or turn on my computer and watch that thing, whatever that is, it's like no, this is masking an actual feeling I have. Mm. You know. Mm. Um, mm me checking my phone for updates that first week of quarantine was, I have a feeling. And that feeling is I'm feeling fearful right now. Mm -hmm. um, so first identifying, I actually have a feeling. You don't even have to know what it is yet. Just saying something's going on. Um, the second thing is to get alone. And I want to, you know, I think as a mom, I'm having to lock the bathroom a lot, which my kids are like, you're going to the bathroom a lot. I'm like, no, I'm just getting away <laughs> for a second. <laughs> no, but, it's not me. It's you. <laughs> So true. <laughs> um, but getting alone for five minutes and asking, what do I feel right wow. now? That's, wow. you know, I think sometimes it's like, yeah, 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 I have a feeling I'm angry. Okay, move on. But it's like, no, what do I feel right now? Well, I'm angry. Why well, am I angry? Because my kindergartner doesn't understand what five plus one is. Okay. But really what's behind all that? Well, I don't feel like I'm capable of doing this. You know, mm. um, I think for me, I got away and was like, I'm checking my phone a lot. What is that? Okay, I feel insignificant. What's really going on? I feel unseen. I don't feel chosen for something that I, I can handle this. Why? Wow. Why is no one calling me? You know, wow. I was Enneagram three. I was born for tragedy and moments like this. You right. know, and so I had to address the fact that I was feeling insignificant. Mm. Um, so the first is I have a feeling. The second is get alone three to five minutes and ask, what do I feel right now? Mm. Um, one of the things Dawn taught me is just to sit. Um, in a place, whether it's your closet, bathroom, and just get connected to your body. So much of us connect our, our mm. disconnect our minds from our body, but our, I mean, God gave us our bodies to give us signals, you know? And, you know, there's the great book called The Body Keeps the Score. I don't know if you've ever read it, but it's mm. all about how our bodies actually tell us things that our, our brains and our emotions can't. So anyway, so I would just say, get alone and, and actually experience what you're feeling. That's the second Lauren, step. What do, give me an yeah. example. What do you mean? Like, what, what would you experience with your body? Like, um, yep. I won't even so try. My you heart go. races. Yeah, yeah. My heart races when I get anxious, ah, Okay, but I don't sit there and feel that, you know, instead I just, when you're going about go. your day, you're just like yeah. moving along, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think honestly, one of the gifts of this season is that we actually get to be self-reflective. You know, we yeah. actually get to sit and ask ourselves questions because there mm. aren't as many distractions. Mm. So I would say my heart racing is an example of that. Uh, this is a whole That's thing great. there, but yeah, I just, I think our body does keep more score than we actually realize it does. Mm. Um, mm. And Anyways, onsite has a whole thing on that, but you should go. And not you, Clay. You may not. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I just I've booked an appointment since we've been on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So the first is I have a feeling. The second, what do I feel right now? The third is what belief about myself has caused me to have this feeling? What belief, what belief, about, belief myself? about myself has caused me to have this feeling? Yeah, and. I think for me uh, regarding the work one was my value comes from what I do. You mm. know, I mean, that mm. was the belief of like, I, 
I know I'm special for who I am, etc. Right. I mean, God loves know. me. Right. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Right. right. Identity in Christ. I get it. Right. But I think for me it was like, no, but the reality is what's driving this anxiety and my heart racing right now is the fact that I feel valuable based off what I do and who knows, wow. who knows what I'm doing. Like when yeah. people know I'm doing something, I'm worth I feel something. valuable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want to. So, um, but again, had I just been like, ah, my heart's racing, let's move on and check Instagram. I would have never been able to go through this process. Yeah. yeah right? Let's just check Instagram. That'll help. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that, that definitely kids are doesn't make it worse. Still banging on the bathroom door, being like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you still in there? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm you're like, working it I out. I will be for ten more years, yeah. anyways. Um, so the third one, what belief about myself has caused me to have this feeling? Fourth is you can choose to either keep or modify this belief. Um, mm. So asking, like, is is this belief true? Because honestly, sometimes your beliefs are actually true. You know. Sure. Um, but our minds, we all know this, like we, we are meaning makers. And so mm. our mind loves to create meaning and it mm. loves to assign meaning and motive to things. And so oftentimes I can assign a meaning or a motive to something that really does not have that, you know? And so I think that that's why it's so important to ask, do I want to keep and mod or modify this belief? Um, well, Lauren, especially right now where it feels like every day there's another new loss you know, another yes. thing that we're having to go, oh, well, I guess it's fine. I didn't really need my prom this year, or I guess it's fine. They've laid off more people at work. I'm sure I'm next or whatever the emotion is. I think really, I love this step of going, okay, I get what I, I think I understand what I'm feeling. I think I've gotten alone and really try to figure out what's behind it. But really I've got to find that belief of, but, but this is saying something about me. What is it saying about me? I'm I'm alone, therefore I don't have worth, or I just lost my job. I must yeah. be a loser, or or I feel stressed. I must not be able to do this. Um, I think finding exactly. that belief is so significant, and it's difficult. It's it's really difficult um, to do that in this season. Even today, my husband was going to Dunkin' Donuts because he has to leave the house for coffee in the morning just for mm -hmm. a break, understandably. And he took my youngest in the car and I found myself just, you know, holding on to him. Like I was scared that they were going to mm. get in a wreck, you know? And I'm like, what's Which going on right now? They won't Lauren. Cause there aren't any cars. They won't. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I'm like, oh, what's yeah. happening? and I'm like, yeah. it's because I just did finish watching, um, you know, an Instagram post of someone and I'm just my, mm, mm. again, I just, I think it seeds through so much of our thinking. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. I just was like, no, I need to modify this belief. They are safe. They are safer mm -hmm. than I think mm -hmm. they are right mm -hmm. now. Which um, modify meaning um, uh, I'm not completely disregarding it. I'm not going to like yeah. throw the belief out the window that my kids, because the truth is none of us right. are completely safe, but I'm also, I like the modify word that yes. no, they are, they are safe enough to go to Dunkin' Donuts right now. Right. Like my husband's a good driver. My kid is strapped in. Right. So it's like, <laughs> That's wise. <laughs> we, right. we, we've done as much as we can, you know, right. they, right. and uh, so, but I mean, I'm just saying it's, it's seeding everything in our thoughts, you know, so you get, I think the question choose to keep or modify it. And then finally, what do I need to do right now? Mm -hmm. You know? And I love this because for sometimes it's like, Hey, I need to just take a walk, you know, for, I, I just need Gosh, to get yeah. out in sunshine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it's like, I need to actually eat fresh food. I know that sounds random, mm. but like the cheese, it's are, they're almost gone, you know? And like, yeah. I, I, you know, it's, it's time for us to create a good meal as a family. I need a dance party right now. Yeah. Like we're just going to turn on music. We're going to move and just yes. have a good time. But, but sometimes it's like, I need a quiet time and I need Stuart to take all three of the kids to Dunkin' Donuts for an hour mm. and a half, you know? Mm. I mean, so. I think whatever that is, um, asking, what do I need right now? And I think that question, what do I need? Not what does everyone else around me need? As soon mm. as I get out of, you know, this room, what is everyone going to need? But like, if I'm going to modify this belief, I'm, if I'm going to change this belief that I'm feeling, I need to do something to reinforce it. And that's what this step does. Which is probably hard for, uh, you know, I'm sure it's hard for a lot of different people, but particularly moms and dads right now who are the primary caregiver and they're handling all the yeah. homeschooling and also trying to keep the job and trying to keep the house clean and trying to figure out, are we going to use Instacart? Or are we going to go pick up our groceries at Walmart? How are we going to do this? Keep everything clean. I mean, there's just so much pressure to do everything right now. There probably is more um, 
more of a need now for self-care. You know, that, that I've heard this adage used dozens of times just during this quarantine, but the whole, you know, put your oxygen mask on first so right. that you can help other people put theirs on. I mean, it's the baker, it's the starving baker that, you know, hasn't yeah. eaten because she's feeding everyone else. Um, yeah. I, I think that idea of I, I have got to take care of me or else yeah. I don't have anything to bring. Yes. And I think, you know, I mean, obviously we're on a church talking about this, but Jesus modeled self-care better than anyone else. Mm. You know, I mean, the fact that he would get up and meet with his father, but he also just got alone. You know, mm. I mean, I feel like the disciples were the version of children this day. And Banging age. at the like, bathroom oh, door. <laughs> seriously. Jesus is still <laughs> in there. <laughs> how needy they were, you know? I mean, Gary Thomas wrote this book, uh, When to Walk Away, which is about toxic relationships. But in mm. there, he references that Jesus, in scripture, they record 41 times that he walks away from people wow. in need. And that wow. was really affirming to me as a mom to be like, hey, this isn't uncaring. God's going to show grace to my kids right now. But sometimes mom needs to walk away, you mm. know? Um, mm. So I think that that's an important part of self-care. What do I need to do in this season? I... um I love how helpful that is to have a plan to decide to pause and then to pay attention to what God might want to prune. I mean, that's not fun to talk about, but Lauren, you're so right. I think God's, um, he's definitely pruning some things out of our own personal lives for sure. I think we can all recognize, wow, I think this is actually a better pace that we should probably be living at. Um, But maybe he's pruning some things out of our family and pruning some things out of our society as well. I mean, I hope it's not the handshake thing. I'm really looking yeah. forward to giving people a hug when this thing's all over. But um, but there are certainly some things that um, I think that he does want to change and uh, take away so that better things can grow. And that really is the heart of our loving God, that he's not, he's not pruning out of discipline, but he's pruning because he loves us and because he wants more for us. And that's uh, really, um, that's... That's at his, that, that is his character for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Lauren, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your investment yeah. in, uh, at Buckhead Church. And um, we're going to be with you guys. We're recording this the day before Good Friday. I don't think this episode, this will be after Good Friday, but we're going to be yeah. with you for Good Friday. Thanks for letting us, letting us in on that. It's going to be awesome. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks, Clay. See ya.